rebirth once, looking at oneself in the mirror, with a naive and familiar face. Master of release, ultimate straight man, with a clean start, impossible, absolutely impossible. With the system in place, how can twenty-five years be said to be over? Recalling the defeat in the original work, this time, I won't lose. Felu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. The journey begins. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Ten years have passed, and tomorrow is my first step. I looked at my own figure in the mirror and said. Xiaoji, master of release, low emotional intelligence, ultimate straight man, starting with a clean slate, super true newcomer, second in 10,000 years, top 16 in the Quartz Conference, top 8 in the Silver Conference, top 8 in the Kaiyu Conference, top 4 in the Suzuki Conference, top 8 in the Hui Huan Conference, runner-up in the Miala Conference, won the championship only in Alola. And the last place of the eight masters, of course, was due to the collapse of the character structure of all the talented people, and was also taken away by a certain person with the same fate. Of course, the reincarnation of Xiaoji also brings with him the system to change the tragedies of the original work, such as Ladios in the water city of Odomar, Pai Shen losing to the fifth level Vine Snake, the water storage spray in the Mier Conference, and many other regrets. Of course, he completes the task and changes the energy points obtained through regrets in the original work. The function of energy points is to exchange various skills and items. For example, fighting skills, cooking skills, musical instruments, Pokemon balls, skill learning machines, stones, snacks, etc. Tomorrow is going on a trip. In this life, I not only want to become a Pokemon master, but I also want to embark on this journey without any regrets. Cheering himself up, Xiao Zhi walked down the stairs. Mother Huazi has prepared breakfast. Thank you, Mom. You have a sweet mouth. All right, hurry up and go to Dr. Daimu's place. Oh, I'm out now, Mom. Quickly, Xiao Zhi arrived at the most luxurious building in the area, which is the location of the Daiki Research Institute. Good morning, doctor. Taking out the key to open the door, Xiaoji went to the living room and picked up a white coat of his own size to cover the outermost part of his clothes. Oh, Xiaoji, you're here. Come on, your last paper on the discussion of the possibility of special evolution has already received a lot of praise. My senior, Dr. Yamanashi, has forwarded your post. Dr. Oki leaned over the computer and looked at Xiaoji's achievements with satisfaction. In recent years, the several papers that Xiaoji has published, whether it is the genetic instability conjecture of Ibrahimovic or the differences in regional morphology of Pokemon, are all under the name of the Daiki Research Institute, which has truly brought Dr. Daiki a lot of research pleasure along with them. With the help of Dr. Daiki, Xiaoji also became the first assistant doctoral researcher in the Alliance under the age of 10, enjoying the official researcher subsidy. By the way, doctor, where did Xiao Mao go? Why didn't you see him today? Xiaoji asked while skillfully archiving the messy materials in the research room. Xiao Mao, Xiaoji's archenemy is also a childhood sweetheart. Over the years, the two have also had various competitions to determine the winner. Of course, either they are tied or the two have their own strengths and weaknesses. As for the archenemy, who in the Hezhong region is completely useless. Oh, Xiao Mao, this child has gone to Changpan City in the past few days. All right, doctor, I've finished organizing the materials. I'll go feed Pokemon first. After organizing the materials, Xiao Zhi moved his neck and prepared to distribute food to the Pokemon in the courtyard. Oh, okay, thank you for your hard work, Xiao Zhi. After finishing your work, you can go home. Tomorrow is the day for you and Xiao Mao to embark on a trip, don't be too tired. Dr. Daimu wrote vigorously while caring for Xiao Zhi. Okay, I see, doctor. With a shrug of his shoulders, Xiao Zhi pushed a handcart through the back door and walked into the courtyard of the Daiki Research Institute. 
As a courtyard of the Daiki Research Institute with over 500 permanent Pokémon, the backyard of the Daiki Research Institute is exceptionally vast, with a variety of living environments including mountains, trees, and rivers. And feeding the Pokémon here itself is a huge project. Add various necessary nutrients to the fixed Pokémon food and then transport it to the Pokémon fixed foraging points in each region. Just for this one thing, Xiaoji has to push the handcart back and forth four or five times. After feeding all the food, Xiaoji could already see a layer of fine beads of sweat on his forehead. Ha, huh, this is really a job that trains people. Xiaoji wiped the sweat off his head and excitedly took out two sour lime fruits. Then, he cut the fruits into small pieces suitable for the entrance and arrived at the border of the grassland forest area. Pikachu Pikachu, softly called out a few times, and suddenly, the sound of Sasha came from the canopy above Xiaoji's head. Pick up. A cute electric mouse with yellow hair peeked out from the treetop. Come on, today you have your favorite lime fruit. Xiaoji smiled and shook the lime fruit on his hand. Pick up. Pikachu made a jump and jumped directly onto Xiaoji's shoulder. Then, Xiao Jiao grabbed the fruit in Xiao Ji's hand and quickly ate it. Pikachu. I'm going on a trip tomorrow. Maybe I won't be able to come and feed you in the future. Xiao Ji hesitated for a moment and said seriously. Pickup truck. Pikachu tilted his little head to look at Xiao Ji, as if pondering the meaning of this sentence. So, would you be willing to go with me? With courage, Xiao Ji placed his hand in front of Pikachu, come and see this world with me, right? Pikachu. Pikachu tilted his head and pondered for a long time. Pikachu. Pikachu. A jump plunged into Xiao Ji's arms, and Pikachu rubbed Xiao Ji's face with his immature cheeks. Are you willing to go with me, right? Thank you, Pikachu. Embracing Pikachu, Xiao Ji felt incredibly secure in his heart. Although we met earlier, the bond of one person and one skin has long been unbreakable after four years of emotional interaction. Here, eat more today. Tomorrow, I'll come pick you up. Let's go challenge and realize our dreams together. Xiao Ji happily rubbed Pikachu's cheek, leaving all the fruits to Pikachu with satisfaction. Pikachu. Pikachu. Pikachu nodded and waved his short hand. Goodbye tomorrow, Pikachu, Xiao Ji waved goodbye to Pikachu and went home from work. Today is also the last night he can stay at home and sleep recently. Tomorrow is the beginning of the journey, and also the beginning of the dream. Set out. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Ding ling ling ding ling ling, the crisp sound of the Pokemon alarm awakened the sleeping ash. Strike the top of the alarm clock hard, the poor alarm clock really cools down. Alarm clock. You're aloof, you're amazing. My poor alarm clock, goodbye. Xiaoji briefly collected a corpse for his alarm clock and started getting up to tidy it up. Wash up, fold the blanket, and keep the bedroom spotless. The next time I come back, it will be a few months later. Arriving at the restroom to wash himself clean, he took out a razor and scraped the Z-dot-shaped fuzz off his face until it was dry and still. Xiao Ji rubbed his newly cut hair and looked at his fair face in the mirror, nodding with satisfaction. The young man inherited his father and mother's looks that he had never seen before. The first ray of sunshine in the morning fell on the young man's shoulder, and a faint golden halo draped over Xiao Ji's back. Fragmented sunlight shone through the ends of her hair, scattering onto her shoulders, scattered and exceptionally gentle. Running all the way to the Daiki Research Institute, the dim light was still flickering in the room. Dr. Daiki may have stayed up all night doing research again, skillfully holding the key and opening the door. As soon as Xiao Zhi looked up, he saw his childhood sweetheart Xiao Mao, who loved and fought each other, and was able to help his brothers at critical moments. Xiao Mao, you're so early in the morning, with your eyes staring like light bulbs at the entrance. Aren't you waiting for me? Xiao Ji asked with a proud smile. Cut, 
I want to be the first to receive Pokémon, and then give you a good beating to let you know who is the number one in Jinshin Town. Xiao Mao hugged his chest with both hands, lifted his chin, and challenged Xiao Ji. Xiao Mao, let me mention that our duel was 124 wins and 123 losses, but I was one game ahead. This is the Kanto region, where Pokémon, Bulbasaur seeds, Johnny Turtles, and Little Fire Dragons are exclusively given to new trainers. Dr. Oki pointed to the three Pokémon placed in a circular glass cover in a pinion shape and began introducing them one by one. No need, Doctor. We've already agreed, haven't we? Xiao Ji blinked at Dr. Daimu. Xiao Ji, have you come up with a plan? Pikachu is just a very common type of electric mouse, and its potential is incomparable to these three, Dr. Oji advised. No, it's just Pikachu. I agreed with it to take it with me when I travel, Xiao Ji nodded seriously. Dr. Daiki smiled knowingly and said, this is the little wisdom I know. All right, Pikachu is in this ball, it's yours. Dr. Daiki pressed a switch on the storage table, and a hidden circular hole opened. The lightning symbol's Pokémon ball rose up. Xiaoji walked forward and without any hesitation, picked up the lightning-marked Pokémon ball and pressed the switch. Pickup truck, Pikachu happily crawled out and then climbed onto Xiaoji's shoulder with ease. I'll rely on you from now on, Pikachu, Xiaoji rubbed the little guy's cheek and said happily. Pikachu, Pikachu. Pikachu patted Xiaoji's head, as if saying, let me handle it from now on. Later, Xiao Mao also ran up at a sprint speed of 100 meters. Xiao Ji, what did you choose? Xiao Mao gasped and looked at Xiao Ji. Pikachu, Xiao Ji pointed to Pikachu on his shoulder. Hey! Do you have Pikachu in the Yuzin family? Xiao Mao looked puzzled. Pick up! Pikachu looked dissatisfied at Xiao Mao, do you understand the hammer? I am the only skin in the world. I tell you that those three royal families are all my little brothers. I hit you for fun, and I row you for a boat. If I want to mess with you, I'll spend at most two money. The three royal families. Give me a little back. Xiao Ji helplessly held Pikachu in his arms and rubbed his head, saying, All right, Xiao Mao doesn't know about us. Pikachu, you don't have to be angry. Pick up. Pikachu symbolically raised his little feet twice, meaning that if it weren't for Xiao Ji's obstruction, I would have beaten and crawled you. Do you believe it, um? This Pikachu has a pretty big temper, Xiao Mao could only smile awkwardly. Since that's the case, my sweet Johnny Turtle can go on a trip with me. Xiao Mao smiled smugly as he held the genie ball of the Jenny Turtle. All right, starting from today, you will be the official Pokémon trainers. Take your Pokémon with you and explore your own future. Dr. Oki nodded with satisfaction and took out two red Pokémon guidebooks from behind. This is my farewell gift, a Pokémon guidebook. Any Pokémon you encounter will be recorded and detailed information will be provided to you. Thank you, Doctor. Xiaoji thanked Dr. Oki and put this elf guidebook from the Shino Forest into his pocket. All right, that's all that's left, Pokémon Ball. Dr. Oki took out the last piece of equipment, five empty Pokémon Balls. Plus the initial Pokémon, it's just enough to meet the standard handheld Pokémon specifications for a team. Xiao Mao Xiao Mao is really good, Xiao Mao Xiao Mao is really great. Just as he finished receiving the Pake Ball, the entrance of the Daiki Research Institute became lively. Oh, it looks like my girlfriends are here. Xiao Mao looked at Xiao Ji provocatively, how about envy or not? I don't envy it. Xiao Mao promised to fight for the first time, will we still fight? It's better to wait for us all to conquer the new Pokemon and decide the winner again. Wait for me, you. Watching Xiao Mao disappear without a trace, Xiao Ji and Pikachu exchanged a glance and awkwardly laughed. So, Dr. Daimu, I'll take my leave first. I'll wait for my good news, he said goodbye to Dr. Daimu. 
Xiao Zhi led Pikachu directly out of the research institute from the backyard. Let Xiao Mao handle the enthusiastic town residents. Xiao Zhi, you need to work hard. Dr. Daimu looked at Xiao Zhi's departure and a gentle breeze blew up the information around him. A photo of the past was revealed, showing Xiao Zhi, Xue Cheng, and Xue Labi. Ho oh! You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After leaving the Daiki Research Institute, Xiao Zhi took Pikachu home to meet his mother first. Pay attention to safety on the way. When you arrive in the city, remember to call me and brush your teeth and wash your face every day. Perhaps every mother in the world is the same. Faced with every word instructed by Hua Zi's mother, Xiao Zhi nodded seriously. Pikachu, our little wisdom, I'll rely on you to take care of me in the future. Finally, Hua Zi's instructions were given to Pikachu. Pickup truck, Pikachu nodded without hesitation. Don't worry, Mom. I will take care of Xiao Zhi. Mom, I'm leaving. Let's wait and see what I've achieved. Xiao Zhi and Hua Zi's mother gently hugged each other before turning around and leaving. Be careful all the way, Hua Zi smiled gently and waved her hand, just like Xiao Zhi always does when she comes home. Leaving the cozy little home of Jinxin Town, Xiao Zhi walked on the path and hugged Pikachu into his arms. Ding, main task release, main mission, sniping enemies, task introduction. Return all the tournament champions that were not won in the original work, with unknown rewards and 80,000 energy points. The main mission is to dominate the Kanto region. Task Introduction Collect the badges of the eight great frontline Taoist halls in Kanto, reward the fast dragon journey, with 50,000 energy points. The side mission, Bicycle Killer, is underway. Task Introduction Protect the bicycles of three generations of female protagonists, reward unknown, energy points 30,000 inch, congratulations on obtaining the National Atlas, Electric Bead X1, Steel Tail Skill Disc, and Skill Learning Machine. Alright, let me first study how to use this National Atlas. I see, the intention opened, and indeed, a rolling subtitle appeared in front of Xiao Zhi. Pikachu, Electric Mouse Pokemon, Electrical Properties Characteristic Static Electricity Level Level 15 Qualification Unknown Item Held Electric Beads, Perfect Level, Skills Electric Shock, Flash of Light, Electric Ball, Shock, Thunder, Genetic Skills Charging But These Tasks Xiao Zhi looked at these tasks and naturally understood that sniping enemies was the original work that defeated all the opponents Xiao Zhi had defeated at the conference, especially the Divine Beast Man and Tiger Che who had to fight to the death. The second task is to open up the Badeo Hall in Kanto, participate in the Quartz Conference, and become the champion of the conference. The two branches are to protect the original female lead's bicycle, and of course, the culprit is the source of all evil. Pikachu in front of Xiaoji. Pikachu, we're about to enter the forest. After encountering the wild Pokemon, I'll leave it to you. As he arrived at the outskirts of the Jobin forest, Xiaoji stopped under a tree. As expected, Bobo turned around and a cute Bobo appeared in Xiaoji's eyes. Bobo, little bird Pokemon, general flying attributes feature. Sharp gaze level. Level 10 Qualification Daoguan Items Held None Skills Impact, Sand Splashing, Storm Pikachu, your first opponent is him. Go ahead, it's up to you. Pointing at the cute Bobo in the grass, Xiaoji rubbed his hands a little longer. You used a fierce storm to blow me up to the sky, didn't you? You even dared to splash sand on my face, right? Then climb down. Pick up. Upon receiving Xiao Zhi's command, Pikachu was invigorated and jumped to the ground, ready to take action. Give it a try, flash with lightning. Xiao Zhi didn't hesitate. The first battle, of course, will start with Pikachu's most classic blitzkrieg. Pick up. Pikachu instantly burst out with a white light, emitting an electric beam. 
Bo. Bo turned around and was knocked out by Pikachu's head. Don't give Bobo a chance to fight back, Pikachu will use electric shock directly. Xiaoji took it away with a combo. Pikachu's two cheeks flickered with lightning, and a precise electric shock hit the flying Bobo. Bobo was directly hit by an electric shock, and his little eyes rolled and he fainted. Well done, Pikachu, Pikachu. at this moment, a Pokemon resembling Popo launched an attack on Pikachu, only to be killed by Pikachu. Pikachu, if we get caught up in these guys' thoughts, we'll be in big trouble. Xiaoji picked up Pikachu and quickly turned around to enter the evergreen forest. Lie. Before walking out 50 meters, Xiaoji heard the earth-shattering bird song. Looking back, the black and fierce sparrow flew up from a huge tree, blocking the sky and sun, like a thundercloud. Run quickly, Pikachu. Xiaoji shouted and ran wildly. Pikachu. Pikachu was not slow at all, and followed Xiaoji on a crazy escape. No way, it's impossible for someone who runs on the ground to escape flying in the sky. Xiaoji was running while thinking about countermeasures. Pikachu. Pikachu let out a painful cry. It turned out that several fast flying sparrows had already caught up, making Pikachu their first target and launching a pecking attack. Ah, in the eyes of your group of GZZs, a burst of blue light erupted. The basic superpowers were actually limited to making people hear and see clearly, unforgettable, and the strongest could even bend the spoon. Xiao Zhi can only make one save, and the price he paid was to be pecked twice by the fierce sparrow to snatch Pikachu out of the midst of the fierce sparrow. It's okay, Pikachu. Holding Pikachu, Xiao Zhi shrank his shoulders and continued running forward. Pikachu shook his head and even extended his tongue to lick Xiao Zhi's wound. It's okay, this injury will pass soon, comforted Pikachu, and Xiao Zhi frowned as he looked at the fierce sparrow hovering above. These dead birds are just playing cat and mouse. That's why they've been surrounding Xiao Zhi and Pikachu all along. Keep Pikachu tightly in your arms, Xiao Zhi's gaze fixed on the sky with a solemn expression. Don't give me a chance, otherwise I will bring my gang to come and settle accounts for you one by one in the future. Lie. Watching Xiao Zhi stop, in an instant, five or six fierce sparrows separated from the group and charged straight towards Xiao Zhi. TMD, the fierce sparrow is not finished, is it? Xiao Zhi punched the fastest flying fierce sparrow, causing it to foam at its mouth and dizzy with stars. As Pikachu looked at Xiao Zhi, who was punching the flaming sparrow, he felt a powerful lightning energy ignite in his heart. Pikachu. With a jump, Pikachu came to Xiao Zhi's shoulder and then suddenly jumped into mid-air. Thunder rumbled in the sky, and a thick lightning bolt hit Pikachu in mid-air. Xiaoji looked at Pikachu's chest in surprise, the electric light flowing through the electric bead, and all the electricity was absorbed into Pikachu's body. Pikachu, use thunder. Pickup truck. Chio. The dazzling electric light burst out, and a thick thunderbolt rose from the ground in the sky and earth. Lie. Groups of lie sparrows fell to the ground like dumplings, and the remaining weak soldiers were also frightened and flew towards the distance, screaming in agony. But from today on, even if the group of fierce sparrows later gave birth to the big billed sparrows, the bullies among these birds have never besieged any humans carrying Pikachu again. Because the older generation of fierce sparrows has already explained that humans with Pikachu are cheating b. If anyone provokes them, they can leave the group on their own. Pikachu with quick eyes and quick hands, Xiaoji slid and saved Pikachu, catching him from falling in mid-air and holding him in his arms. Thank you Pikachu, you saved me. Xiaoji stroked Pikachu's forehead, revealing his true feelings. Pick up a pickup truck. Pikachu smiled weakly. You sacrifice your life to protect me, how can I let you get into trouble? Hidden task completed, death penalty for the Flame Sparrow Clan, Rewards placed in the system backpack. Time ball, energy points 25,000 inch time ball. 
This ball is equipped with Pokémon released by the original time and space Xiaoji. Specific Pokémon will return to the host side and cannot be released. Discard and give as a gift. Adhering to the principle of energy conservation, this Pokémon will not appear again in the timeline. Open the panel. Xiaoji hugged Pikachu, who was feeling empty in his arms, and clicked on his temples to open his own panel. Name. Xiaoji Age. 10 years old energy point. 5 million skills. Super Newcomer, Wave Power, not activated, Super Ability, Intermediate, Pokémon Breeding, Advanced, Cooking, Intermediate, Speech, Advanced, how did this superpower level up? Xiao Ji asked strangely. Ding, due to intense mental fluctuations, the superpower has broken through and risen to intermediate level. Unlocking Ability ECG Induction Xiao Ji just opened the system redemption interface and exchanged a bottle of full recovery medicine for Pikachu, as well as two bottles of Moo Moo fresh milk for himself. There are 499,900 remaining energy points after consuming 100 energy points throughout the venue. After drinking the full recovery potion for Pikachu, the little one regains some energy slightly. With the first overload discharge, Pikachu can be said to have broken through his racial limit in the stamina pool. Even with the full recovery medicine, Pikachu may have to be weak for at least a day. A cool thunderstorm arrived unexpectedly, and Xiaoji had to find a nearby slope with low terrain to rest. After feeding Pikachu half a bottle of milk again, Xiaoji took a gulp of the remaining milk in one breath and only then felt that he had regained some strength. Otherwise, Pokémon trainers are extreme sports. On the first day of going out, Xiaoji personally verified this statement. Pikachu, you should rest well first. Xiaoji hugged Pikachu to his chest, took off his coat, and wrapped it around Pikachu's body. Pikachu also pressed tightly against Xiao Ji's chest, and the two companions warmed each other up. Ming. Just as Xiao Ji and Pikachu were dozing off, a colorful divine bird let out a resounding cry, dispelling the dark clouds and carrying a rainbow, flying past Xiao Ji's eyes. With a click, Xiao Ji took out his picture book and took a photo. Xiao Ji and Pikachu smiled. Pikachu, that's the Phoenix King, the legendary Pokémon. It said that his body shines with colorful light, and wherever he flies, it forms a rainbow. Pikachu looked at the Phoenix King with longing and nodded. In the future, we will definitely be strong enough to defeat the Phoenix King, Pikachu. Let's work hard together. Xiao Ji said, Pikachu. Pikachu extended his small fist and lightly punched Xiao Ji. Ming, the Phoenix King flapped his wings again and disappeared from the eyes of Xiao Ji and Pikachu. A colorful feather fluttered and landed in front of Xiao Ji. Welcome back. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Accepting the rainbow feather left by the Phoenix King, Xiao Ji put it away in the pocket that was close to his heart. Wealth is not revealed, and a careless mistake can bring endless trouble to oneself. Next is this time ball. Xiao Ji took out the silver white ball from the system space. The time ball allows for a free future. When this ball is opened, a specific Pokémon will return to the host side and cannot be released, discarded, or gifted. Following the principle of energy conservation, this Pokémon will not appear again in this timeline. This time ball contains a statue placed in the evergreen forest. There's nothing to say now. Come back, Bidiao. Xiaoji threw the ball in a posture and withdrew the Pake Mon declaration. At that moment, everything was just right. Diao. The golden feathers on top of his head, flapping his huge wings, and the Bidiao, which landed slightly higher than Xiaoji, officially announced its return. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. Xiao Ji walked up and wrapped his arm around Bai Jiao's neck, sighing softly. Jiao, it's okay, I've been waiting, waiting for the day I get back to you. Gently rubbing against Xiao Ji's chest, Bai Jiao remained so obedient and obedient. Pikachu. Pikachu looked at the suddenly appearing bird in confusion, 
wondering why there was a strange yet familiar feeling. Pikachu, this is Bai Jiao, our good friend in the future, it is very trustworthy. Xiao Ji patted Bai Jiao's wings with a firm tone. At the beginning of the comparison, Xiao Ji carefully examined the basic information of the sculpture. Bai Jiao, Dinyao Bao Kumeng, average, flight attribute feature. Sharp gaze level. 38 qualification. Heavenly King level items held. None skills. Impact, flash of lightning, severe storm, feather dance, tornado, high speed movement, storm, wing attack, genetic skill. Air slash. In the future, please come back, Bai Jiao. Taking back Bai Jiao, Xiao Ji frowned slightly. Although the level of level 38 can be considered very high at the current stage, the return time of Bi Jiao is after the Quartz Alliance, which means that after the Quartz Conference, Bi Jiao's level will reach the elite level. And the skills learned are quite weak, not only do they lack the steel wings to counter the rock type skills, but they even haven't learned the most basic flying type Yanhui. It seems that the failure of the Quartz Alliance can only be said to be an inevitable result, Xiao Ji could only sigh slightly. This time, we must grasp the training of Pokemon from the beginning. Hello, may I ask? Xiao Ji was stunned as a girl with a single ponytail slanted appeared beside him. Hello, I'm Xiao Ji from Jinxin Town. May I ask if you have anything to do? Xiao Ji regained consciousness and smiled politely, looking at the girl. Refreshing broken hair, clean cheeks, black vest, blue coat. Combined with a polite smile, Xiao Xia's psychological defense line instantly became unstable. Look. Show me everything, this is what we girls call a clean boy. Hello, my name is Xiao Xia. I forgot the time while fishing and I'm a bit afraid of walking alone at night. Can I go with you? No problem, but will riding a bicycle take up your time? Xiao Ji pointed to the brand new bike pushed by Xiao Xia. It's okay, we can go together. Xiao Xia proposed a solution. Ah. I didn't mean that. Looking at Xiao Xia's bewildered expression, Xiao Ji couldn't adapt anymore. Okay, thank you very much for your bike. Taking off his coat and placing it in the basket, he properly placed Pikachu and turned his head to look at Xiao Xia, who was still blushing. The two of them walked towards Changpan City together. The bicycle bells jingled, and along the straight path of the forest, Xiao Ji pushed Xiao Xia's bicycle, and the two of them advanced towards Changpan City. Stop it. Routine inspection. Miss Jun Sha from the police station stopped the two of them in Jobin City. Please show me your ID card. Miss Jun Sha walked up to the two of them in high heels and saluted heroically. Okay, thank you. Xiao Ji took out the picture book and flipped to the last page, handing it to Miss Junsha. Dr. Daiki's voice came from the picture book. Ding. This Pokemon guidebook is held by Xiao Ji from Jinxin Town. Please note that if it is lost, it cannot be reissued. Dr. Daimu from Jinxin Town left a message. Okay, we can confirm the identity of the trainer now. Jun Sha politely returned the guidebook to Xiaoji. In this era before the proliferation of mobile guidebooks, those who could hold the Pokemon guidebook were generally trainers with deep connections to Pokemon scholars. What's wrong with your Pikachu? Miss Jun Sha looked at the weak Pikachu in the basket and asked with concern. It's a bit detached, I'll send it to the Pokemon Center now, Xiaoji answered truthfully. Okay. Changpan City has been not peaceful these days. Try not to run around, Miss Jun Sha advised. Did anything happen these past few days? Xiao Xia asked. It's the rocket team. Recently, we found eyewitness reports of rocket team activities near Jobin City, so please try not to go out at night, Miss Jun Sha explained to the two of them seriously. Xiaoji watched as the wanted notice behind Jun Sha was lifted by a fishing line and reminded him. Miss Jun Sha, your wanted warrant has been taken by a suspicious person. What? 
Jun Sha suddenly turned around, a wanted notice floating in mid-air and a dazzling meow balloon in the sky were particularly eye-dot-catching. Stop me. Don't run. Riding on the motorcycle, Miss Junsa blew out a black smoke and chased towards the direction of the hot air balloon. Cough cough. How does Miss Junsha give people a feeling of wind and fire? Xiaoxia coughed twice in dissatisfaction. Forget it, let's go to the Pokemon Center first. Xiao Zhi pushed his bike and the two of them quickly arrived at the Pokemon Center in Jobin City. Hello Miss Joey, my Pokemon is injured and has lost its strength. Please help me treat it. Holding Pikachu, Xiaoji quickly went to the counter to find Joey. I know. Miss Joey lowered her head and operated on the computer. The hospital bed is used by the electrical department's small Pokemon. Lucky. Two lucky eggs pushed the hospital bed out, and Xiaoji carefully placed Pikachu on it. Pikachu, be obedient and cooperate with the treatment. I'll wait for you in the lobby. Touching Pikachu's cheek, Xiao Zhi left the hospital bed and let the Jili eggs push Pikachu into the treatment room. No problem, you did a good job in emergency response, and I will treat it well next. Miss Joey put on medical gloves and comforted Xiao Zhi before turning around and entering the treatment room. Is your Pikachu okay? Xiao Xia walked over and asked Xiao Zhi with some concern. There shouldn't be any problem. But I still want to thank you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have arrived here so quickly, Xiao Zhi politely smiled at Xiao Xia. If that's the case, I'm also counting on your blessings to avoid camping in the wilderness. If you have nothing to do, go rest early. I want to give my family a call first to report safety. Politely, Xiao Zhi turned around and left. Xiao Xia didn't leave either but sat on a nearby bench to rest. Arriving at the location of the video phone, Xiaoji first found a phone and sat down. First, I dialed my mother's phone. Hello, I'm Xiaoji's mother. Who is it? Huazi sang while wearing a facial mask. It seemed that Xiaoji was in a good mood on the first day of leaving. Mom, it's me, Xiaoji. Looking at my mother who wanted to be happy, Xiaoji could only report her family background to attract the other person's attention. Xiaoji. Huazi immediately took off the facial mask on her face and went to the front of the phone video. Where are you now? I have arrived in Jobin City and am currently at the Pake Mon Center in Jobin City. Xiaoji reported his location to reassure his mother. Oh, my son is really great. He will definitely surpass your father and grandfather's Pokemon trainer in the future. Hua Zi said confidently. Ha, huh, I think so too. Xiaoji nodded, although he didn't know where his cheap father and grandfather were in the world, the only thing he could confirm was that both of them went missing during the journey. However, my important goal now is to win the tournament championship that Xiaoji did not win in the original work, and to travel safely back home no matter what. Then you must remember to brush your teeth in the morning and have a good meal, okay? Mom always thinks about these trivial and warm things. Well, I know mom, I'll pay attention, Xiaoji smiled and nodded patiently. That's it, good night, Hua Zi's mother hastily ended the conversation as it was getting late. Good night, just as I hung up on my mother's phone, a phone rang again on the main computer of the Pokemon Center. Seeing that Miss Joey was still busy, Xiao Zhi answered the phone. A screen rises from the mural beside the wall. Dr. Oki faces the camera with his back. On the table is a big beaker, cooking lamian noodles, Doctor, you are eating instant noodles again. And that beaker can't be used to cook lamian noodles. The last time you took it out, there was a taste of miso barbecue. Xiao Zhi reminded me angrily. Hum lamian noodles. Dr. Oki looked back, ouch. The camera is not adjusted. Awkwardly turning the camera towards himself, Dr. Oki could only cough twice and pretend that nothing had happened. I just received a call from your mother saying that you have arrived in Jobin City, Dr. Daiki could only abruptly change the topic. I just hung up the phone. 
Xiao Zhi looked at Dr. Daimu speechlessly. I'm very panicked about your behavior, doctor. I just happened to call Changban City and see if you'll receive the call. All right, I know you're doing well. Coming to Changban City was a small step for you, but it's a big step towards becoming a Pake Mon trainer. Doctor, I suspect you're fooling me, but I don't have any evidence. Hi, how could that be? The more successful trainers there are in Jinshin Town, the more glorious I am. Dr. Daiki resumed his seriousness. How many Pokemon have you caught so far? Not to mention Pikachu, there's only one. What? Surprisingly, only one was caught. Dr. Daimu stared at Xiao Zhi with dissatisfaction. But I met the Phoenix King and took a photo. Xiao Zhi took out his picture book and pointed it at the camera. Oh my goodness, this is a legendary Pokemon that no one has ever witnessed before, Phone Wan. You actually met me. Xiao Zhi, quickly pass me the photo. It's not good for my face, it's a mess. Click. Dr. Daiki disconnected the connection. A real doctor can't eat a normal meal. Xiaoji fumbled and remembered that he hadn't eaten anything. Pikachu hasn't come out yet, Xiaoji looked at the free restaurant at the Pokemon Center and has already rested. After all, the night is already deep. Fortunately, there were still a few breads on the self.service shelf, and Xiaoji took two breads from his backpack and two bottles of milk and brought something to Xiaoxia's side. You haven't eaten yet, can you please cushion it a bit? Hand the bread and milk to Xiaoxia. Xiaoji also sat down on the bench. Thank you, I haven't introduced myself seriously yet. I am Xiaoxia from Hualan City, with the goal of becoming the world's number one water-based Pokemon trainer. With a confident smile, Xiaoxia extended her hand to Xiaoji. Hello, I am Xiaoji from Jinxin Town, with the goal of becoming the strongest trainer. Xiaoxia and I shook hands gently, and Xiaoji also took a bite of the bread. Xiaoji looked towards the treatment room with concern, unsure if Pikachu's detachment was severe. Dong, the light for treatment went out, and Miss Joey and Jili Egg pushed Pikachu's bed out. Xiao Zhi quickly stepped forward and asked, Miss Joey, how is my Pikachu? Pikachu should have just been charged, and he still wears a small light bulb on his head, which is exceptionally cute as it turns on and off. There's no problem now. I've charged it with about 10,000 volts of voltage, and as long as I sleep peacefully, there's no problem. Miss Joey proudly patted her nurse uniform and said, Generally speaking, without Pokemon, we can't cure it. It's truly Miss Joey. Xiaoxia gave Miss Joey a thumbs up. Tonight, you can accompany Pikachu. Miss Joey handed Pikachu's small bed to Xiao Zhi and prepared to go back to rest. Ordinary people who work overtime so late are also very tired. Doodle doodle. Before Miss Joey could breathe a sigh of relief, the alarm at the Pokemon Center began to frantically display its operation. Warning. There is a Pokemon bandit group invading Changpan City. Please be vigilant. Xiao Zhi could only smile wryly, but the person who should have come still came. Wow. The glass on the ceiling shattered all over the ground, and two Pokemon balls fell down. Gas bullets and Abe snakes rushed out. Gas the round and cunning gas bomb, which was still smiling, couldn't help but scatter a smoke curtain. What kind of people are you? Since you sincerely ask the question, we will tell you with great compassion, to prevent the world from being destroyed, to protect world peace, implementing love and the true evil, the cute and charming villain character, Musashi, Kojiro, we are the rocket team shuttling through the Milky Way. The white hole and white tomorrow are waiting for us, that's it, Meow, Pikachu is ready to start fighting. Xiao Zhi returned to Pikachu's hospital bed and whispered to him, can your buddies come out and help me? Pick up a pickup. Pikachu nodded with a smile. Humph, little devil, do you think a little electrical mouse can resist us? Musashi looked at Ash disdainfully. That's to say, our goal is a precious Pokemon with high value. Kojiro agreed. Hey, 
Talking so much nonsense isn't it about snatching Pokemon? Xiao Zhi interrupted their daydreams, Pikachu, let them understand what heavenly justice is. Pikachu. With Pikachu's call, there was a commotion throughout the Pokemon Center, and Pikachu groups, who served as backup power systems, rushed out of the backyard of the Pokemon Center. Countless Pikachus lay on Pikachus, and then dazzling lightning burst. Pikachu. Pikachu leaped up with a hundred times more energy. Complete recovery. All right, let's blow away the smoke first. Xiao Zhi took out Bai Jiao's Pokemon ball. I've decided to use you, Bai Jiao. With a fierce storm. Hoo hoo. The stronger wind pressure than the eagle blew away the smoke curtain, revealing the rocket's three fools with a wicked smile on their faces. Pikachu, are you ready? Xiao Zhi looked at Pai Shen. Pikachu. Pikachu nodded confidently, no problem at all. So, give them a profound lesson, use thunder. Pick up. Accompanied by a strong electric light illuminating the entire center of Pokemon, thunder as thick as a bucket descended from the sky. What? How could it be? Amidst Musashi Kojiro's incredulous gaze, the two of them failed to make their debut and were struck by lightning by Pikachu before being sent to the sky. Meow. This Pikachu is too strong, isn't it? Meow. Meow leaned against the corner with Abe Snake and Gas Bomb in fear. They are all teammates of the Rockets. If you just run away like this, it's not easy to explain when you go back, right? Xiao Zhi smiled and looked at Meow Meow. What are you doing, Meow? Meow asked, waving its paws wildly. Compare the carving, send them together, use a tornado, Xiao Zhi said thoughtfully. Diao. Compared to Diao's huge wings flapping, a small tornado instantly formed. Meow cats, gas bombs, and Abe snakes hugged each other, neatly transforming into shooting stars in the sky. Next time, goodbye. Transition. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Xiao Zhi, are you and Pikachu okay? Xiao Xia ran up worried and asked. It's okay, thanks to the charging of those Pikachu, Pikachu and I are in excellent condition now. Thank you, young trainer. If it weren't for you driving away the rockets, the Pokemon Center would have suffered a huge loss today, said Joey sincerely. Xiaoji just smiled slightly, after all, half of the Pokemon Center was blown apart in the original work. This time, two pieces of glass from the ceiling were broken. Miss Joey, you're welcome. I think every trainer would step forward in such a situation. The newcomer trainer who was trembling in the corner for a while. Xiao Zhi, you are so strong compared to Diao. Is your goal the Quartz Alliance? Miss Joey went to clean up the mess, and Xiao Xia leaned in and asked. That's right, the Quartz Alliance was my first goal during my trip. Xiao Zhi also told Xiao Xia about her first goal. Well, it's quite late, girls need to rest early. Is this boy quite interesting? He's handsome, strong, and speaks well. Xiao Xia nodded and decided that I would travel with him. Returned to the resting dormitory and locked the dormitory door. Xiao Zhi breathed a sigh of relief. Xiao Zhi took out the skill learning machine and couldn't help but look back and forth. Skill learning machine, this is a good thing. If it were in a specialty store, the estimated price would be tens of thousands. Skill learning machines, combined with skill discs, are high-dot-tech products used to teach Pokémon skills. As long as Pokémon is retrieved from the ball, then embedded into the learning machine and inserted into the skill disc that can be learned, Pokémon can learn the energy utilization and power generation methods of the corresponding skills. Because the content of the skill disc is a product of high-dot-tech analysis, the teaching content is often straightforward and easy to understand. With a little training, Pokémon can proficiently master this skill. Pikachu, could you please go back and play with the Pokéball? Just play with it. Later, Xiaoji pleaded to Pikachu with his hands clasped together. 
Let's learn the skill of this steel tail and then come out to sleep, okay? Pick up a pickup truck. Pikachu showed a really impressed expression on his face and reluctantly agreed. Xiaoji carefully took out the Pake ball and took Pikachu back. Then embed the sprite ball into the spherical entrance of the skill learning machine. With a click, the switch of the Pake ball emits a crisp sound, indicating that the Pake ball has entered a learning state. Xiaoji took out the previously rewarded steel tail circular disc, found the interface, and stuffed it in. Buzzing. The skill disc begins to spin at a high speed visible to the naked eye. After more than a minute, the disc slowly stopped spinning. With a click, the disc and sprite ball popped out simultaneously, and the learning was over. Come out, Pikachu. Xiao Zhi released Pikachu and looked at him eagerly, How are you, have you learned it? Pikachu. Pikachu nodded excitedly and then jumped three feet high, his tail shining with a silver-white glow. This is a manifestation of the energy of the steel system being applied to the tail. Chio. Pikachu suddenly stumbled and fell onto the bed, and the light from his tail dissipated. Pikachu. Pikachu waved his tail a few times with some anger. It's okay, let's practice slowly later. Anyway, we've learned the technique of steel tail, and the next step is to practice the truth. Rubbing Pikachu's little head, Xiaoji comforted him softly. Pikachu. Pikachu. Let's go to bed now. Rest well, we'll go into the Changban forest early tomorrow morning. Pulling up a corner of the blanket, Xiaoji smiled and patted Pikachu beside him. Pikachu, Pikachu happily crawled into bed, rubbed Xiaoji's hair, and peacefully fell asleep. Early in the morning, after finishing washing up, Xiaoji took Pikachu and Bidiao to the Pake Mon Center to have breakfast. Good morning, Xiaoji. Xiaoxia, who had finished washing up, also came to Xiaoji's side. Good morning, Xiaoxia politely greeted Xiaoxia, and Xiaoji packed his luggage and prepared to depart for Nibi City. Xiaoji, are you leaving? Xiaoxia asked anxiously. Well, at the Jobin Dojo in Jobin City, according to the dojo trainer's regulations, he is not allowed to receive any strength below seven badges, so I have to cross the Jobin Forest to Nibi City, explained Xiaoji helplessly. To be honest, Xiaoji doesn't want to have any interaction with the rocket's leader, Banmu, so early on. Can I travel with you? In order to become an expert in water system Pokemon, I also want to take a walk and see. Seeing that Xiaoji was about to leave, Xiaoxia mustered the courage to propose her own ideas. Sure, if two people are together, they can also take care of each other. But I don't have a bike, Xiaoji thought for a moment and agreed. Without Xia Jia and Gang Ma, is that still called Wuin? It's okay, I left my bike at the Pokemon Center. Traveling is really more meaningful than hiking. Xiaoxia saw that Xiaoji didn't refuse, so she happily left her bike in Jobin City. After bidding farewell to Miss Joey, Xiaoji and Xiaoxia embarked on a journey together once again. And now, the two of them have also arrived at the evergreen forest, where there is no sunshine all day long. Ah! A loud and piercing scream echoed through the sky and earth, and Xiaoxia threw herself onto Xiaoji's back. Look at that, worm! Worm! Xiaoxia shook her body in fear. I understand, Xiaoxia. However, can your leg? Go down first. Xiaoji is now being held by Xiaoxia behind her, and she is unable to move. All right, Xiaoji, hurry up and deal with him. Xiaoxia blushed and jumped down from behind Xiaoji, then carefully hid behind him. Pikachu, scare him with an electric shock. Pointing to the ground beneath the green caterpillar's feet, Xiaoji said with a rather complicated expression. Pikachu. Pikachu nodded knowingly, extended a little finger, and stabbed a small current to hit the ground. Mao Mao. The green caterpillar was frightened and quickly turned around to escape. Goodbye, I want to become a beautiful butterfly in the future, and I also need to find a good wife who loves you. Silently, Xiaoji blessed the green caterpillar, 
watching it go away. Beside mission, I'm fighting Bushido. Task introduction. Please do not leave your hands behind. Use your full strength to beat the young warrior who attacked you. Reward. A set of evolution stones. Ibrahimovic. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Xiaoji, did the bug drive away? Xiaoxia pulled at the corner of Xiaoji's clothes from behind, tightly closing her eyes and not daring to open them. Don't worry, the green caterpillar has already been driven away. Let's keep moving forward, comforted Xiaoxia. Xiaoji tried to pull his coat out of Xiaoxia's hand, but failed. Okay, Xiaoji, you go ahead. Xiaoxia said, once bitten by a snake, you can hear birds chirping everywhere. Now, any wind or grass moves, she will not hesitate to pounce on Xiaoji's back. Ah, let's go. Xiaoji shook his head and patted Pikachu's little head. Xiaoxia now occupies Pikachu's position, so Pikachu had no choice but to walk with Xiaoji on short legs. Shua shua shua. The grass suddenly moved and a figure walked out of it. It is a Pokemon with brown fur all over its body, resembling a fox in appearance. It has regular ears on top of its head, brown fur all over its body, a wide tail, and a dense mane around its neck. The mane and tail end appear creamy. Is this Ibu? Xiaoxia was a bit surprised. Bye. Ibrahimovic's eyes suddenly stiffened before him, and he opened his mouth directly. The stars emitting golden light in his mouth struck like darts. Pikachu. Pikachu was the first to react, emitting an electric current and releasing it towards the front. Is it a battle? Pikachu uses a flash of lightning and a steel tail. Bang. With a loud bang, the steel tail slammed heavily onto Ibrahimovic's body, and the tremendous force directly pulled him out, flying several meters away and falling onto the ground. It rolled along the ground several times, pulling out a constant stream of dust and smoke. Pick up Pippi. Pikachu gasped heavily after landing. In the end, Ibrahimovic reluctantly stood up and began to confront Pikachu. After a while, Ibrahimovic's expression relaxed and he immediately fell to the ground unconscious. Xiaoji also threw the Pake ball and subdued the fallen Ibrahimovic. At night, he found an open place to light a campfire, and Xiaoji simply spread his sleeping bag on the ground. Although he has a portable tent, is it for Xiaoxia or for the two of them? The moon tonight is really beautiful. After eating the hot soup prepared by Xiaoji, Xiaoxia lay in her sleeping bag counting the stars with great satisfaction. Perhaps, many nights, there are countless Pokémon who yearn for the sky, looking up at the sky and silently accumulating strength. For example, baby dragons and green caterpillar. Disgusting, what kind of insect? Xiaoxia's mouth sank and she hid herself in her sleeping bag. Good night. Xiao Xi smiled casually, holding Pikachu and falling asleep together. After a peaceful night, Xiao Xi slowly woke up. Pickup truck, feeling Xiao Xi's movements, Pikachu lovingly searched his eyes and got up. Good morning, Pikachu. Touching Pikachu's head, Xiaoji took out food from his backpack and fed Pikachu, Bidiao, and I.B. While the three brothers were cooking, Xiaoji put away his sleeping bag and took out a bottle of water to wash his face. After Xiaoji finished cleaning everything, Xiaoxia slowly woke up. Good morning, Xiaoxia stretched lazily and looked at Xiaoji, who was dressed neatly. Good morning, let's have some food first. We're getting ready to go. Today, we're going to find some wild Pokémon in the forest to fight, upgrade Pikachu's level, and familiarize ourselves with the steel tail. Xiaoji handed Xiaoxia a bottle of milk and then instructed Pikachu to start practicing the steel tail technique. Pikachu, are you ready? Xiaoji held a few wooden sticks and earnestly explained to Pikachu. Pikachu. He patted his small chest, filled with confidence. So, prepare. Let's start. As soon as the words fell, Xiaoji threw a wooden stick into the sky with all his might. Pikachu. 
Pikachu took two steps to run up, then jumped high and flipped his body in the air. The white light from his tail suddenly lit up, and then fiercely struck the wooden stick in the air. Click. The wooden stick shattered in response to the sound. Well done, good. He touched Pikachu to encourage him, and Xiaoji threw the second one again. After going back and forth more than ten times, Pikachu was already able to smoothly use his steel tail, and Xiaoji finally gave up. That's all for today, thank you for your hard work, Pikachu. Xiaoji held Pikachu in his arms and gently rubbed his tail. After using the steel tail so many times, the muscles in his tail must be very sore. Ah! Ha ha ha, we're meeting again. Xiaoxia was slowly drinking milk when she heard the sound and sprayed it out in one gulp. How could it be them again? For the sake of, alright, we've heard the full version, let's skip it this time. Xiaoji waved his hand and took out the pake ball. Are you craving my Pikachu's body? Cough. Little devil, you can't have any professional respect for us, Kojiro retorted in dissatisfaction. That's right, that's right, you make us look stupid like this. Musashi was like a hot and explosive monkey about to die of anger. That's right, we're not looking for you today, we're looking for Pikachu's meow. Meow jumped out and pointed to Pikachu next to Xiao Ji, announcing. Pikachu uses lightning to flash, while Bidyao attacks with wings. Come on, Abe Snake. Go ahead, Gas Bomb. Pikachu dodged the gas bomb's attack with a lightning fast acceleration, and then crashed the gas bomb away. Bai Jiao followed at a low altitude, his wings attacking and flying Abe Snake far away. Um. The situation doesn't seem to be right. Yeah. I feel like we can't beat each other. Musashi was also a bit confused. He's a newcomer to TMD, not an old hand at making fish. It's okay, meow. Meow meow showed its paws and walked up. Next, let me, Uncle Meow Meow, come on. Meow Meow from the Muji period may have some mysterious confidence in his combat power. Pikachu, give me an electric shock to him. Xiaoji pointed to Meow Meow, intending to give the young Meow a good lesson. Pick up. The electrical strip on Pikachu's cheek flickered with lightning, and without any hesitation, Pikachu was struck by a powerful electric shock. Meow, so numb, so numb. Meow. At some point, Meow Meow turned into a burnt black unidentified object and lay at little Jiro's feet. Anyway, remember it for me. Let's make an exception and let you go today. Let's retreat. Kojiro threw down a rose and held on to Musashi's cat, which had become an unknown object, and ran away. Welcome to the experience again next time, Xiao Ji waved goodbye to San Silly. Xiao Ji's mood was like putting on new underwear for the new year. Alright, let's fight against the wild Pokemon now. Pikachu put on his backpack and Xiao Ji continued to set off with pride. Wait for me, Xiao Ji, there are so many insects here. Startled by the passing bee, Xiaoxia quickly followed Xiaoji's pace. Changpan Forest still has a long way to go. Chapter 7 The Great Needle Bee You are listening at NovelFull.audio After successfully sending away the long.term experience package for the future, the rocket's three fools, Xiaoji, and Xiaoxia set off again, and the two continued to move towards the direction of Nibi City. At some point, a cute unicorn beetle appeared in front of Xiao Ji. Ah! Bugs! Xiao Xia retreated 500 meters in fear. Oh my goodness, this unicorn beetle has great talent. Xiao Ji didn't dare to look away now and directly opened the information of this unicorn beetle using the system atlas. Unicorn worm, caterpillar Pokemon, worm, poison attribute characteristic. Scaly Powder Level Level 7 Qualification Zhuanshan Item Held Poison Needle Skills Spinning, Insect Bites, Venomous Needles, Deadly Needles, Genetic Skills Electric Grid Come Out, Baijiao 
It's a kilometer away, and all the suspicious people who are close to me should be under my control. Xiao Zhi suppressed his excitement and put on a safety net for himself. Diao. Bai Jiao immediately took off and his sharp gaze began to alert. Pikachu, flash with lightning. Without any hesitation, Xiao Zhi immediately took action. At level 16, he hit level 7, with my advantage. The unicorn beetle had almost no time to react before Pikachu hit the tree head. On. Step back and use an electric shock. For safety reasons, Xiao Zhi added another blow. At the same time, behind Xiao Zhi, there was only a bang, and something was pressed down by Bai Diao behind him. Go ahead, Pokemon Ball. Xiao Zhi took the Pokemon Ball and started cutting it directly. The unicorn beetle transformed into a red light and was collected into the Poké Ball. As it was in a state of losing combat ability, the Poké Ball's warning light only flickered once before going out. Who put away the Pokémon Ball, and Xiaoji finally breathed a sigh of relief. Touching Pikachu's small face as a reward, Xiaoji then turned around to check. What express delivery did Bidiao send to him? Damn it, let go of me. I'm just a warrior practicing in the evergreen forest. A chubby young man wearing old dot fashioned armor and holding a long sword was pressed to death by Bai Jiao's claws, and for a while, he twisted his body in frustration. Moving his arms, Xiao Zhi walked up with a smile and snatched the knife from the boy's hand. He held it in his hand and broke it, but it turned out to be a toy rubber knife. Bai Jiao let him go. Xiao Zhi waved his hand and asked Bai Jiao to scatter the chubby little guy. Of course, the main reason is that lying on the ground makes it difficult to get started. It's really impolite. Fighting without declaration goes against the way of a warrior. The chubby little man said in dissatisfaction as he sorted out his armor and climbed up. Pop. Just him, you're a warrior. Are you still fighting? The chubby guy looked at Xiao Zhi in surprise, covering his face. My dad hasn't even hit me. Are you the only one who wants to ambush me, right? Xiao Zhi swung his arm and slapped him again. This time, he completely laid the guy down. Xiao Pangji covered his face and looked at Xiao Zhi with tears in his eyes. I'll ask you, was it wrong, was it wrong? Wrong. Big brother, I was wrong. The chubby little man huddled in place. All right, dare to get out of here. Don't think of sneaking attacks on others in the forest every day, or I'll hit you once I see you. Thank you, big brother. I don't want this toy knife anymore, it's crawling up and running fast. The kung fu disappeared without a trace in a blink of an eye, hey. Xiaoji, something seemed to have run over just now. At this moment, Xiaoxia, who was hiding from a unicorn beetle, also ran back. Well. Maybe it's a samurai boy who's driven by his interests. Xiaoji smiled and beckoned Xiaoxia to continue on the road. Watching Xiaoxia still preparing to come up and grab her clothes, Xiaoji decisively released her new Pokemon. Come on, unicorn beetle, let's get to know each other. Watching Xiaoxia's face turn pale from green, Xiaoji chuckled to herself. Fortunately, the unicorn beetle didn't like to stick with the little sister, which helped Xiaoxia avoid a disaster. Pikachu. Pikachu. Bye Pikachu, Ibrahimovic took a picture of the unicorn beetle and will become brothers from now on. Jiao, although the unicorn beetle is not even as good as Jiao, since it has entered Xiao Zhi's Pokemon ball, it is a family. Bai Jiao nodded to the unicorn beetle very handsome. The task has been completed, and a set of evolution stones for rewards has been placed in the system space. I.B., I'm asking you, what kind of form do you plan to evolve into? Xiao Zhi released I.B. and asked. Xiao Zhi placed a photo of the eight major evolutionary forms of Ibrahimovic in front of Ibrahimovic for him to decide for himself. Ibrahimovic looked at his eight evolutionary forms and ultimately chose Ice Ibrahimovic as his evolutionary form. I.B., put your hand on it, Xiao Zhi said, 
placing the ice stone from the evolutionary stone he had just completed the mission on the ground. By Ibrahimovic placed his hand on the ice stone and saw Ibrahimovic let out a long cry. The ice stone suddenly emitted a brilliant light, which enveloped Ibrahimovic's entire body. The light emitted spread out like ripples on the water surface. Little Smart could clearly see that Ibrahimovic's body was changing in the light, his size getting bigger and bigger, and the fluffy tail behind him gradually became slender. Long hair like ponytails grew on both sides of his little head, Eve, this is, Xiaoxia said with a bewildered expression on her face. Icy Bu, using the ice stone and the frozen stones near Xiefeng City in the Shineo region can allow Ibu to evolve into Icy Bu, Xiao Zhi touched Icy Bu and said. Bing Ibu, Xian Shu Ebao Kameng, Bing Feature. Frozen Body Level. 15 Qualification. Heavenly King Level Items Held. None Skills. Frozen Wind, Coquettishness, Impact, Collision, Sacrificing oneself for collision, wagging tail, imitation, shouting, longing, help, high dot speed star, batten, sand splashing, lightning flash, round pupils, this is for the unicorn beetle and this is for you, Xiao Zhi took out the magical candy. Is this candy? Xiaoxia curiously leaned in. Pokemon exclusive candy, if you eat it, it will grow into a beard. Xiaoxia, do you want to try it? Xiaoji peeled off the colored candy paper outside the magical candy, an attempting fragrance spread out. Gudong. Can't this candy person really eat it? Xiaoxia was clearly greedy. Of course not, why did I lie to you? Xiaoji divided four candies among his four Pokemon. The no no unicorn beetle lay on Xiaoji's hand and just licked a magical candy. Immediately, its eyes lit up and it swallowed the whole candy directly into its mouth. Thorny, accompanied by the absorption of the energy of the magical candy, the little one began to burst out with a white evolutionary light. As expected by Xiao Zhi, the unicorn beetle had already reached the critical point of evolution and was nourished by the energy of the magical candy, which naturally led to evolution. The white light dissipated, and the original unicorn beetle was already wrapped in a hard shell. The unicorn beetle has successfully evolved into the iron shell Kuan. As long as it remains quiet until its shell breaks, Xiaoji will harvest a powerful giant needle bee. No need for anything else, just one tenth of the size of the big needle bee in the special section is enough. On the other side, Pikachu, Bidiao, and Bingibu, who had eaten the magical candy, squinted their eyes comfortably. The abundant and gentle energy throughout their bodies made them feel like they had been soaking in a hot spring. Pikachu Pikachu, after finishing the magical candy, Pikachu, whose fur was all shiny, walked hard in front of Xiaoji, like a small leader, shouting slogans of one, two, one. I walked for half a day like this, fighting when encountering wild Pokemon and learning skills when encountering thinner twigs. I didn't get bored during this process. Finally, before the night fell, the two of them arrived at the entrance of the city of Nibi, where the dark grey color scheme made the entire city look quaint and atmospheric. Xiaoxia, be careful not to step on that stone. Xiaoji quickly pulled Xiaoxia up, who was preparing to rest on the roadside rock. Why? They want to sit there and rest. Xiaoxia was dissatisfied. That's someone else's product. Xiao Zhi pointed to a man wearing a knitted hat, sunglasses, and mask sitting below the slope where the two of them are now. Hello, boys and girls. Uncle heard the commotion and greeted Xiao Zhi and Xiao Xia. Nibi City is a city rich in rocks, and the quality of the stones here is the best. Do you want to buy two pieces to pickle kimchi? The uncle warmly introduced his products. Uncle, we are trainers and may not be very familiar with using this. If you want to sell it, uncle, you can go and sell it to those in need. By the way, Xiaoji, are you going to the Taoist temple? Xiaoxia asked as she looked at the sun about to set. No, we'll go tomorrow. Let's go rest well first, and then challenge ourselves tomorrow. Let's go to the Pokemon Center first. That's right, let's go then. 
Xiaoxia didn't object either. To be honest, she felt tired now. This day was not only exhausting, but also worrying, but also very tired. The trainer at Nibi City Hall is very strong, and it's not easy to defeat him, the uncle responded naturally as he listened to Xiaoxia's words. I know better than you that Dao Guan trainers are very strong, but Xiao Zhi is also very strong. Xiao Zhi couldn't help but take a glance at Xiaoxia. Xiaoxia was from Hualan Daoguan, and it can be said that Hualan Daoguan was very weak during the Muji period, due to Xiaoxia's three sisters. Challengers who were already capable of fighting during the solar and lunar periods went home to find their mothers. Because I can tell at a glance that you are new trainers. I sell stones here and have seen many trainers before. Are you new trainers who can tell at a glance? Xiaoxia, it's getting dark soon. We won't chat with uncle anymore. Let's go quickly. Okay. Successfully arrived in the city of Nibi, Xiaoji's first battle in life must be fought beautifully. Chapter 8 Pre-War Preparation You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Xiaoji and Xiaoxia arrived at the city center, which happened to be the Pokemon Center. Together, they entered the Pokemon Center and arrived at the front desk. My Pokemon, please, Miss Joey. Xiaoji found Miss Joey and took out the Pokeball. Unconsciously, including Pikachu, four of them have been taken over, which may be a bit less than the style of Xiao Mao, but it is much faster than the speed of taking over in anime. Originally, only Pikachu was worried about being difficult to deal with, and he didn't have much advantage in dealing with rock and ground types compared to eagles. Iron Shell Kuen now doesn't have much combat power, and Icy Boo can learn three water type skills. Water Wave, Splashing Cold Water, and Seeking Rain. Miss Joey, please trouble you. When I saw Miss Joy, I was not surprised to see Xiaoji at the first sight, but she looked exactly the same. It was difficult to distinguish her. Except for the color of the cross on the hat, I could hardly tell the difference. Of course, except Xiao Zhang, no one else could tell the difference. Okay Xiaoji, feel free to teach me. Your Pokemon will soon recover. Miss Joey responded warmly and gently, and Xiaoxia was also taking out her Pokemon ball. Hmm. Does Miss Joey know Xiaoji? Xiaoxia was a bit puzzled when she heard Joey calling Xiaoji by her name. Yeah. I heard about your situation in Jobin City from my sister, and thanks to you, the rockets didn't succeed. All the Pokemon from the Pokemon Center in Jobin City have been teleported here. After confirming the safety of Jobin City, it was teleported back, and Miss Joey from Jobin City also explained the situation between Xiaoji and Xiaoxia. So it's like this. Xiaoxia nodded after understanding the reason behind the situation. It's nothing, it's just a simple matter. Pikachu and his team will trouble you, Xiaoji replied calmly. As a trainer, there will still be many such things in the future. Okay. You can go have dinner first. After dinner, it's probably ready. Miss Joey responded and left with Jili Egg, along with Xiao Zhi, Xiao Xia's Pokemon Ball, and Pikachu. Let's go ahead, Xiao Xia. Let's go eat her stomach first. Then the two of them went to the restaurant together for dinner. About half an hour later, they could see that some prominent places in the center were also adorned with promotional posters for the Quartz Alliance Conference. Many people are looking at posters, it seems that there is a lot of competition in the Alliance Conference. Yeah, but that's what's interesting. Xiao Zhi also knew that the original work, Xiao Zhang and Xiao Xia, agreed before handing over the badge to him. Li Jia, the rocket's three fools, interrupted the game and caused a fire, saving Li Jia's favorite and once helpful stinky flower. Out of gratitude, he handed over the badge to Xiao Zhi. As for Nazi, who fought three times in a row, it was still thanks to Ghost Stone's teasing that Nazi was unable to continue commanding the Battle of Yang Jaila and finally won the badge. The Shallow Red Road Museum was won by Aju after releasing a large sea, 
while the Chang Pan Road Museum was won by Xiaoji because the owner of the museum was the leader of the rocket team, Ban Mu, who had some issues. It goes without saying that the management results of San Sha were successful, and Xiaoji was able to successfully win the green badge. Only the Ma Zhishu orange emblem and the Xia Bo red lotus emblem were defeated head dot on, but Xia Bo also put a C to win. Looking at Xiaoji's confident appearance, Xiao Xia was a bit stunned. He didn't know why this boy had such confidence, but she really didn't feel like a newborn calf is not afraid of tigers. Xiaoji came to the front desk and retrieved the Pokemon. Pikachu regained his vitality and jumped onto Xiaoji's shoulder, and the two of them settled in the Pokemon Center. In the room Xiaoji lay in bed pondering his future plans. Starting from Kanto, Orange Islands, City, Fongyuan, Battle Development Zone, Chanel, Hajong, Carlos, and Alola, he wanted to win all the conference championships in the league and eventually become the league champion in Alola. Let me see the plot of the original work. The mythical beast man in the Chanel region, what kind of tiger is that from the crowd, Carlos is scriptwriter's son, and all those who stop me must be beaten down. On second thought, Xiaoji opened the system store to exchange for three skill discs. Splashing cold water, water fluctuation, and seeking rain. He arranged for Bing Yibu to use, as well as a sniper feature card, when the iron shell pupa evolves into a big needle bee. Place Isebu's Pokemon ball on the skill learner, insert the skill disc, and then the skill disc begins to rotate at high speed, repeating it three times. All right. Xiao Zhi stretched his waist and picked up Pikachu to start sleeping. Getting up early, Xiao Zhi began to wash up and prepare to go to the Taoist temple early. Chapter 9 Xiao Gang You are listening at NovelFull.audio At some point, Xiao Zhi and Xiao Xia arrived at the entrance of the Nibi Dojo with a fierce aura early in the morning. Like Nibi City, this Nibi Dojo is also full of rock style the roof is entirely built with a huge rock, giving the impression that the entire building is like the interior of the rock has been hollowed out. In front of it is a door that looks quite simple. Is this the Nibido Hall? It looks so simple. It should be the trainer of the Taoist school who likes it. Xiao Zhi knew that Xiao Gang attached great importance to the Taoist school. Faced with his reckless parents, Xiao Gang had to hand over the position of Taoist school owner to his younger brother Jilong. Xiao Zhi pushed open the door and walked in. The heavy sound of the door rang out. As he walked in, the hall was pitch black and he couldn't see his fingers when he reached out. Dung. Upon hearing the sound, as if the gate was opening, the lights inside the hall suddenly shone. The spacious hall was all made of rocks, and on the stairs ahead, a figure sat under the light. A hedgehog head with dark skin and squinting eyes, sitting cross-legged on a high platform with meticulous attention to detail. To be honest, it's really difficult to combine his serious appearance with the image of the LSP behind him. What kind of people are you? Xiao Gang looked at the two with a serious expression. Seeing Xiao Xia, there hasn't been much change. As expected, Xiao Zhang is only interested in Big Sister. My name is Xiao Zhi, I came to challenge at the Daoguan. Xiao Zhi didn't waste time and said directly. After hearing the sound, Xiao Zhang looked at Xiao Zhi for a while, but still sat in place without any intention of getting up. He spoke lightly. Is this your first time challenging at the Daoguan? That's right. Judging from your appearance, you have just become a trainer. You should know, the challenge at the dojo is different from the battles on the roadside. After looking at Xiao Zhi, it seems that he can see that he is a new trainer. The rules of the Alliance Arena challenge, since I'm here to challenge, I don't need you to say it. I understand it too well. Let's not waste time, okay? Interestingly, if someone comes to challenge, the Taoist trainers cannot refuse. Feeling the feeling Xiao Zhi gave him, Xiao Zhang slightly jumped up and jumped off the high platform. The competition is limited to two Pokémon, and when both Pokémon lose their combat ability, it is considered a loss. Do you understand? No problem. 
Xiao Zhi responded loudly upon hearing the sound. Trainers who have never been to the dojo or challenged the Nibi dojo for the first time will have different reactions when they see this situation. Seeing Xiao Zhi's calm demeanor is completely different from what a new trainer should have. It seems that this trainer is not the kind who will be easily scared off, Xiao Gang analyzed and evaluated Xiao Ji's appearance in his heart. As a trainer at the Nibi Dojo, Xiao Zhang was the first to send out Pokemon. The sound rang out, appearing from the blue light in the Pake Ball, and a Pokemon floated in the air. My body is like a gray round stone. There are raised stone eyebrows, trapezoidal eyes, coffee-colored iris, and a pair of muscular arms. The small fist stone is like a gray round stone. There are raised stone eyebrows, trapezoidal eyes, coffee-colored iris, and a pair of muscular arms with five fingers. The little fist stone inhabits the roads of grasslands or mountains, and there are as many roadside areas as there are. The scholar who had time tried to count, and there were one hundred, on the road. It will bury half of its body underground and observe the appearance of past climbers. Many people just don't pay attention, and if you look around carefully, you will see many small fist stones. Because it looks like a small stone, you may accidentally step on it or trip over it. Due to accidentally stepping on it, it will make it furious, waving fists and getting angry, so you need to be more careful. Sometimes, the super-armored rhinoceros also shoots it out of the palm hole as a rock. It takes pride in its hard body and will use its sturdy body to collide with its companions to compare who is harder. It will also compare its hardness with similar stone balls, making it difficult to distinguish it from small stones. The longer the lifespan of a small fist stone, the more edges and corners it will have worn off and become rounder. But his temper has always been foul-smelling, hard, and very rough. When he gets angry, he keeps waving his fists. Little Fist Stone can climb steep mountain roads with just two hands, and in the morning, he will roll down the slope to search for food. People seem to have started rock climbing after seeing its figure. The round small fist stones are easy to hold, so you can grab them and play small fist stone battles by smashing the opponent. But if you have to throw it at each other, it's hard and heavy, and playing with it like a snowball fight can be very dangerous. Rock and ground style small fist stones, then please. Xiaoji took out Icy Boo's Pak a mon ball from her waist, and Xiaoxia stepped aside to watch the game. Chapter 10 Battle You are listening at novelfull.audio. Please, Bingy Boo, Xiaoji dispatched Bingy Boo, who had learned three water skills last night, to lead the formation. The elf ball flew out with a bang, and Bingy Boo's figure appeared in the blue light on the field. Did you discover the evolved form of IB in the Shineo region? You're welcome, you can attack first. Xiao Gang looked at Bing Yibu in the field and immediately spoke to Xiao Ji. The trainers in the Taoist school usually let the challengers attack first. Bing Yibu seeks rain with his hands, it's raining underground on the battlefield now, and the rain is spraying down. Zaya Shuishi's body feels quite uncomfortable being hit by the rain. Bing Yibu uses high dot speed stars, after hearing the sound, Bing Yibu rushed forward and immediately jumped into the air. He looked up and released his ultimate move towards the bottom, and the golden stars kept falling from the air like shooting stars towards the direction of the small fist stone. Not good, little fist stone, quickly block it. The fluctuation of water use, Eve, Icy Boo condensed a blue energy ball and suddenly sent a wave of water rushing towards the small fist stone. The small fist stone was knocked away by Icy Boo's blow. At this moment, little fist stone's body was directly embedded in the deep pit, and his eyes turned into a vortex. Icy Boo was standing in front, with some dust on his body, and his body was not in any serious condition. It seems that I underestimated you too much. You are different from ordinary new trainers, Xiao Gang said with a serious expression as he looked at Xiao Ji in front of him. Really? Then you have to be serious next. I don't want to lose to me because you're too careless. Xiao Ji smiled and put on his hat, looking up in response. 
Thank you for your hard work, Little Fist Stone. Xiao Gang said to the elf ball after retracting the Little Fist Stone. Retrieving the Pokemon Ball of Little Fist Stone, he took out a new Pokemon Ball, and Xiao Gang's face became even more solemn. He directly threw out the Pokemon Ball of Big Rock Snake with his ace in his hand. Go up. Big Rock Snake. Mu no. With only a loud bang, accompanied by a roar similar to the sound of a yak, a massive figure appeared in front of everyone. The massive body was covered in huge gray rocks. From head to tail, the rocks grow from large to small, with a pointed rock corner growing on the head. The body size of the great rock snake is quite astonishing, with adult great rock snakes generally measuring at least 8 meters in size. The little gang great rock snake still appears to be growing, about 6 to 7 meters in size. It's raining underground on the battlefield now, and when the great rock snake is washed away by the rain, its dry body is immediately soaked by the rain. It's obvious that the great rock snake doesn't like this kind of weather. I can only grip my head. Xiao Gang's face was quite ugly, and the great rock snake was quite weak in water skills due to its combination of rocks and ground. Big rock snake, tie it tightly. Xiao Gang directly chose to launch a frontal attack. His great rock snake's defense is 160 times stronger than Little Fist Stone's defense, and he is not afraid of the opponent's attack at all. Icy Boo used the combination of frozen wind and splashing cold water while avoiding attacks. The freezing wind slowed down the speed of the great rock snake, and Bing Ibu threw a water ball with his tail, quickly moving away from the snake at the same time. There are still the last two rounds, the fluctuation of ice and water usage. Icy Boo condensed a water ball and attacked the great rock snake, causing a wave of water to hit the snake's body. With a loud bang, the body of the rock snake collapsed on the field. Big Rock Snake Xiao Gang sighed and took out the Pake Ball, saying, You've done a great job, Big Rock Snake, take a good rest. Xiao Gang approached Xiao Ji and said, It's a wonderful battle. Xiao Gang took out a badge from his pocket and handed it to Xiao Ji, saying, This is your spoils of war, evidence of defeating the Nebi Dowager, Grey Badge. Thank you. Xiao Ji accepted his first badge in life. Ding, main task progress. Dominate Kanto, complete January 8th, reward. Skill disc. Scroll, 1000 energy points, title. Beginner. Pokemon below level 25 will obey your commands. On the second day, Xiao Gang. How could you be here? Xiao Xia looked at Xiao Jiang in front of her in surprise and asked. I plan to go on a trip. Xiao Ji. If you don't mind, let's go together. How about having someone to take care of? It's okay. Having one more person can also be beneficial, Xiao Ji replied calmly. However, what should be done at the Nibi Dojo? Well, my dad came back yesterday and we talked a lot. Now the dojo and his family have handed it over to my dad. Welcome to join, Xiao Jiang.